Hello everybody, Mr. Atrophy here. This is the next part in Skeptics versus Believers, and this is the part where I'm talking about a type of person that is a clusterfuck of the worst parts of each of those. Type of person that when they come upon a new or a conflicting viewpoint, they require often unrealistic and impossible proofs. The most common one with creationists is prove God doesn't exist. Which if you think about it, proving anything doesn't exist is pretty much impossible. While at the same time their beliefs and their ideas require very few or often no proofs. Originally, I had one example of this, but just now a second one was pointed out that was just too perfect. The first one is a video of Dawkins and uh, Lady Mrs. Wright. She is a president of some sort of uh, feminist creationist uh, foundation or something, and Dawkins is debating her. And she's one of the most ignorant individuals I've ever seen in my life. I have no idea how that man just didn't slap her. The second one, uh, GPH Hawkins pointed out, it's a video he did about Megasage, who is another creationist that makes some really asinine and illogical comments and points about atheists and evolutionists. Um, both of these people do a very good job of debating these people's points and pointing out their flaws. So that I don't have to do and that I don't want to do. I'll link those below so you can uh, watch these two people um, counterpoint the other two. But if, if you watch these, you'll see, especially in the Cocktopus video, where Dawkins gives this lady a list of evolutionary steps of people, starting at, like, uh, Homo erectus and listing the ones going up and explaining really quickly how, how it works with the lengths of the chain, you know, little changes over time and and all of that and ex explains DNA and how chromosomes have bonded together in humans and you can look at DNA and see a hierarchical structure of beings getting simpler and simpler and simpler and how they're all connected and the similar traits and everything and he gets done and she looks him right in the eye and says but where's the evidence all you have is writing in a book And it, it's that that I'm talking about, where after that, she started talking about Adam and Eve. And you get really conflicting ideas there, where she, she believes Adam and Eve, with not even a sketch in a book. It, it's just a really dumb story in a book that makes pretty much no sense whatsoever. And she takes that to heart and holds that as true. But then when she's confronted with evidence to the contrary, which in my opinion is a mountain of irrefutable evidence for evolution, she pretty much wants the carcass of a the missing link put down in front of her. And even then a would pretty much bet that she'd find a reason to think that it uh, wasn't real. And recently, uh, Brad Skidmore pointed out that there's a name for this called cognitive dissonance. And I haven't heard about that before. When the, these two extremes exist in one person, it prevents any advancement of knowledge, which is the damage. It leaves you closed to new ideas. 
and leaves you stuck on old ones. It's a the, the middle way that I've talked about before when it comes to believing and being skeptical. You, you have to be skeptical. You have to question things. But at some point, you have to look down at what you're doing and what you see and say to yourself, I believe it. And denying yourself that, that middle way and falling into the... The, the trap of not wanting to find out you're wrong can cause way, way too much damage. It was Richard Feynman that said something along the lines of, you have to be careful not to fool yourself because you're the easiest one to fool. And that is a trap that far too many scientists have fallen into, where you go into a situation with a preconceived idea, a preconceived theory, and you're just laser-focused on that one, ignoring other stuff. And that's saying, if, if, if you only have a hammer, all your problems are going to be nails. And like I said, sometimes I fall into being far too skeptical and not believing enough. So I can't say that um, I've never done this. But you have it, it is something you have to work on. Just a second. Hello. Okay. Now that that phone call is over. I'm guilty of that sometimes, but you always have to be willing to change, and you always have to be willing to almost view yourself from the outside to analyze yourself. The, the, sing, the single thing that that cokehead pedophile Freud got right was the um, self-analysis idea. And you always have to be doing that. You always have to be willing to change. You always have to be willing to look at something and realize that you fucked up. And willing to change that. But if you're too skeptical or too much of a believer, you might not ever get that chance to realize you fucked up. And some of the greatest men were made a lot of mistakes. Edison once said that he didn't just invent the light bulb. He figured out 3,000 ways not to make a light bulb. So, don't fall into your own traps. And don't let yourself start being too much of a skeptic and too much of a believer. Like the Buddha said, the middle way. It's a good idea.